This is the day that the Lord has made. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, whether you're worshiping with us in person or online, and we give God thanks for your presence this day. We want you to know that God calls us to grow our relationship with God, connect with each other, and serve the world. And we invite you to join us in making that mission happen wherever it is that you wind up being. I want to invite you to fill out one of the blue cards that are in the pew racks there and to drop that off in the offering plate this morning. And then also just a word about Vicar Heather. She is not here with us this morning and is taking some well-deserved vacation. Actually, her daughter is graduating from college. And so we celebrate uh, that special family time with her. Speaking of uh, interns and vicars, I'm going to be in Columbia on Monday and Tuesday, so tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, be gathered with uh, other internship supervisors at our seminary, at Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, along with our next incoming intern, Vicar Christina Neslage. She's going to be uh, coming, coming here uh, August the 1st and starting with us. And for those of you keeping score, the, our third intern here in the recent history, we've had one that's a graduate of Southern Seminary. Vicar Heather is a graduate of Wake Div. And now we will have a student who will be a graduate of Duke Divinity School. So there you go. We'll have a good, good variety of folks that are there for that. But anyway, uh, it's, an, it's an exciting time, and uh, I'm certainly thankful that Epiphany continues to be a part of the internship program. I think this has been a very good thing for our interns, as well as us as a congregation. Again, welcome, and I invite you to stand and face the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, we are united to Christ's death and resurrection. Let us give God thanks for the gift of new life. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away. And the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears. Wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the peace of victory for our God. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and at this time I invite our young children to come forward. Hello, young children. All right, I have some things I'm going to show you today, and I want to see if you can tell me what it is and what it does. Sam's going to show you. Raise your hand. What is that? And what does it do? It cleans up stuff. Yes, it helps us clean. All right. What's that? Yes. It's a screwdriver. Do you know what it does? Oh, hello, hello, hello. You were on the nursery. Okay. Well, welcome. Okay, what does a screwdriver do? Yes, Emma. It helps you attach something, like a screw. There's some more stuff in here. All right. What is this? A flashlight. Yes, and what does it do? Make light so you can see. Yes, it helps us or to be able to see when it's dark. Or you can pretend it's a lightsaber. You could pretend it's a lightsaber. All right. This one might be a little harder. Does anybody... I can open this. Okay. It helps us to open cans. That's right. Not hard at all. That one. Okay, this one is harder, but don't answer this one. Let somebody else have a turn, okay? All right. Do you know what this is? Wesley. A red circle. A red circle. <laughs> yes, that is true. But what does it do? 
Charlotte. Oh, actually, it's my hand. Yes, Charlotte. I believe, because I have one at home, it helps you get the lid off the top of a really tight jar. That's right. It helps you open a jar. All right, I've got one more. Who's not answered me yet? Oh. You've answered me twice. All right. I have, I have. All right, what's this? A, a tape thing. All right, and what, do you, what does it do? Yes, it helps them stick together. So these are all different, but they have something in common. Yes. They're all tools. They are all tools. Yes, they all help us. They're all helpers. Oh, did you want to say something? They all have plastic on them. <laughs> You're back to the stapler. <laughs> they don't, they, he said they all have plastic on them. That's left over from a game where he was trying to pass off a stapler as being plastic, even though it's metal. Okay, they're all helpers. And I'm talking about helpers today because Jesus talks about a helper called the Holy Spirit. And he was telling his disciples that they were kind of sad because he was going to leave them. And they were like, what are we going to do? He, Jesus said, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will be with you always. And he knew that they were going to have kind of a hard time. Some people weren't going to like hearing about Jesus, and they might be mean to them. But Jesus told them, you will always have the Holy Spirit with you to help you. And we have that too. Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. That's the part of God that's in our hearts and in our minds. So we are never, ever alone. We always have the Holy Spirit with us. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. Because Jesus asked us to do some hard things. He says, love God, love other people, and love yourself. And do you know what? Sometimes it's hard to love other people. Sometimes they're kind of annoying. Or they're not nice to us. And we want to be not nice back. If somebody calls me a name, I might want to call them a name. But the Holy Spirit can help me be kind to them. And when I forget to be kind and I call them a name back or I make a mistake, the Holy Spirit can forgive me. So, and not just once, over and over again, the Holy Spirit would be with me and forgive me. So let's say a prayer. Dear God... Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Thank you for our Holy Spirit. That, is with us always. that is with us always. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming. This morning's first lesson comes from the 16th chapter of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, and there we supposed a woman named Lydia, oh, there we supposed was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman, women who had gathered there, a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God. She was listening to us, and she was from the city of Thyatria and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said to Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Merciful to us and bless us. May 
the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known on earth. Your saving love upon all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The second lesson is from the 21st chapter of Revelation. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then an angel showed me the river and the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I have said to you. 
peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Have a seat. One of the decisions that I made a little bit over 10 years ago was to completely stop watching cable news. Part of the problem for me was that there were too many political echo chambers that get promoted on these networks. And I have to say that I am tired of hearing the political talking points from one party or another about the news. I'd rather hear the news. To me, that's an important difference. I need to know what's going on in the world, not what some other person thinks about what's happening in the world, because there's a difference. But really, the most important reason for me that I decided to stop watching cable news was that I noticed that everything gets ramped up. Everything. Most of the segments that began after a commercial break had this ominous music in the background with an announcer that would have this sweeping sound effect that would come in and it would say, breaking news. Every news story is a very, very big deal. And most of get, what gets attention is unusual, awful, or something that's dramatic. That's when the news was getting reported. Meanwhile, when there was commentary about the news, there were always these dreadful split, split screens where people would be talking over each other, yelling, insulting, and using other obnoxious methods to sort of get their point in, rather than trying to have this true debate about the implications of the latest news. It felt like I was watching world wrestling match rather than a political conversation. For me, this preyed on a very primal emotion in my own life, anxiety. What I've found more and more is that as people get amped up, as the news stories become more and more breaking, our brains and our central nervous systems will kick into high gear looking for danger. I have to say that when I was watching it, I felt my shoulders sort of tense up. That's when I knew that the anxiety was a problem. And so I made the decision to stop watching and I get my news in other ways, mostly by reading it online through reputable news sources. My hunch is that our news media has learned how to prey on our anxiety. And I think that that is a symptom of a much larger problem that we're going through. Even before COVID-19 was ever spoken on any of our lips, I think we have lived in a very anxious period of time. Anxiety continues to be ratcheted up on a local, statewide, national, and even global scale. Because I've so rarely ever seen people make wise decisions when they are apprehensive or anxious, this means that as a society, we have found ourselves in this mess where we are reactive to everything, any story, rather than proactive, and quite frankly, emotionally regressing. Which is why I think some of the words of Jesus in our gospel reading are some of the hardest words for all of us as modern Christians. Peace I leave you, he says, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. 
let's take a minute. Let's think about the setting of these words. I know we're in the middle of the Easter season where we are proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus, but this morning's gospel reading is on the night before Jesus dies on the cross. Things are very tense in Jerusalem, and most especially among Jesus' disciples after he washes their feet. They don't quite get what's happening. So Jesus spends a lot of time in John's gospel trying to explain what's going on to his closest followers. And on top of that, by this point in John 14, Judas had already left and was already putting into practice the betrayal. The fix was in. In the very moment when things are tense, just before the moment when things will change in a powerful and mighty way for the disciples and for the world that God so loves, Jesus gives them the gift of peace. And because they have been given his own peace, they do not need to have their hearts troubled or afraid. But notice how this peace comes about. It does not come about because of something that the disciples do. It is rather something that is given to them, and it is a gift that is given to us. We do nothing to earn it. We simply receive the gift that God in Christ has given to us. In other words, Christianity is not about us achieving different levels of peace by what we do or don't do. Instead, Christianity is first and foremost about us hearing the good news that the triune God has given us the very gift of Jesus' peace. It is not something that we earn through our works. It is a gift. But what does this gift mean? Well, obviously, that means that it means more than I could ever talk about in one sermon. But one of the things I think it means is that Jesus' peace does not mean that hardships get taken away. While we have these images of serene places that come into mind this time of the year, like the mountains or the beach or our favorite vacation spot, the truth of the matter is that when Jesus gives the gift of peace, things are hard for his disciples. And after the resurrection, things don't get any easier for Jesus' followers. So part of what Jesus' peace means for us is that his peace will exist in the midst of hard times and turmoil. Jesus will certainly embody that when he is on the cross on Good Friday. In other words, when we Christians proclaim the gift and receive the gift of God's peace, there can be peace during pain and shalom during sorrow. The other thing that this morning's gospel can remind us of is that during struggle, during those moments when we struggle to find the gift of peace, God's spirit is right beside us. I will send you another advocate to be with you, Jesus says. Greek word there is parakletos. And while you normally don't hear me talk about Greek in my preaching, the thing that I want you to know this morning is that this is a really hard word to translate. Different English translations use the word paraclete like this. Advocate, that we just heard. Helper, like what Janet talked about in our children's sermon this morning. Counselor. Helper companion. These are the sorts of words that English translations use. The point is this. God's Holy Spirit will be the one who will be right beside you and me, working in our hearts and in our lives and in the world. Sometimes this is going to be harder to see than other times. Evil still exists in the world. But in little and big ways, 
God's Spirit is speaking to us, reminding us of a constant presence. This God will continue to be Emmanuel, God with us. Not just when things are going well, but also when things are hard. The Gospel tells us over and over again that by the power of the Spirit, God will be there with us in hard and in good times. This is part of the reason that we come to worship. This is why we read the Word of God in worship. This is why we gather around the Lord's table for communion each Sunday. This is why we are in a Christian community. We are not alone. God's Spirit is with us, helping, comforting, advocating, and counseling us. And God gives us all of those gifts and the gift of each other to sustain us during those hard times, sometimes with a glimmer of peace, sometimes with a lot of peace, so that we have others that we can rejoice in those good moments in life and share in those sorrows. But know this, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of the God, light of light, true God and true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, who has broken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are set free from captivity and death through Christ Jesus. And so we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation, saying, hear our prayer. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, revive neighborhoods where there are limited resources. Bring renewal to urban gardens family farms, and backyard produce patches. Give an abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners, and good soil for all who provide our food. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of steadfast love, be with the children who are living in insecure housing, with food insecurity or in unsafe homes. As the seasons change, help us remember the children who go without over the summer while others thrive. Be with all kids and help them live in freedom, love, and safety. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of peace, give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace, especially Josh Golden, Joyce Kofelt, victims of gun and racial violence, and those we name before you now. Inspire us to create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of persistent goodness, uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people, especially those fleeing domestic violence, war, and persecution. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died, especially Dennis McNeil and Helen Larkin, when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust these prayers to you, God of love and wisdom. Renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace now. Peace be with you, Shelley. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceful reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.
stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. God, the author of life, Christ, the cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news.